In this episode, guys, we're gonna talk about how to create comparison charts like ICT in Trading View. So, why would you need comparison chart? ICT is comparing, for example, in this case that I'm gonna show you today, the Nasdaq with the S&P. And he calls that type of comparison a relative strength analysis. And we will see now onwards how to actually apply it. What you need to know is that we are going to be comparing highs and lows, so very similar to the SMT technique between the Nasdaq and the S&P. And what we expect is that they should be moving in the same direction. They should not be making similar highs and lows, but the relationship between highs and lows should be the same. Don't worry if you haven't grasped it completely, let me first show you how to create comparison charts in TradingView and then you're going to see how to actually do the relative strength analysis. Now, let's imagine that you are on the e-mini futures NASDAQ 100 and you want to compare it to the S&P. What you need to do first is click on the plus sign that you see on the left side of this chart with the big red arrow and then you're gonna see a comparing symbol and you can type in ESH 2023. Then you select it and you select specifically new pane. After you select new pane, what happens is that you're gonna have two charts, one of top, which is gonna be the Nasdaq and one on the bottom, which is gonna be the S&P. Very important is that on the S&P, so on the bottom, you go and you click on the little settings, which you can see on the left lower side of this chart with the red circle. And then when this little pane comes out, you need to select style and be sure that you have selected candles. So you do not see lines, but actually candles. Then you click OK. Now, let me show you what you can do with the relative strength analysis and what you can actually do by comparing two different charts, in our case, two indexes, the Nasdaq and the S&P. Here we have the contract of March 2023 and what we are seeing is this specific price movement. If you need to, feel free to pause the video for a moment and analyze it yourself before I keep going. What we were talking about before with the relative strength analysis is that the Nasdaq and the S&P in this case, considering that they are so connected as indexes, they should have similar highs and lows and the relationship of these highs and lows in time should be the same. So the two charts should have the same lows and highs aligned in time and the relationship between them in time should be similar. But let's see if that's true in this case and what we can understand from it. To do so, the easiest way is to place a vertical line and place it on, for example, a high or on a low that you see on the Nasdaq and make it match exactly with the S&P. What can you observe? Let's say that this red line now shows the low and it is a line between the two charts. Now we need to see, slowly moving the red line, how the lows and the highs compare. Let's look first at the Nasdaq. Here we have two highs and the second high is actually higher than the first high. What do we have on the S&P? On the S&P, again, we have two highs and the second high is only slightly higher than the first high. So the S&P is not really showing the strength of the high that the Nasdaq is showing. Let's keep going. Now we move the red line and we compare and look at the highs before and after the red line. What do we see? On the Nasdaq, we have a higher high and a lower high. Instead of the S&P, we have a lower high and a higher high. Can you spot the difference between the two? Even if this is really, really interesting for us, that doesn't mean anything concrete yet. It's simply a little difference, a little divergence between the two. Now we keep moving the red line and what do we see among the highs? On the Nasdaq, we have a lower high and a higher high, and then a fair value gap that's been formed between the two. 
Instead, on the S&P, we have two highs that are quite equal, so we have relative equal highs. So guys, ICT is comparing the Nasdaq with the S&P, and as we said before, he calls it relative strength analysis. It's about comparing highs and lows between the two, and keeping in mind that they should be moving in the same direction, but they should not be making similar highs and lows, but the relationship between highs and lows should be the same. And what we can deduct by looking at the relative strength analysis between the Nasdaq and the S&P is that the Nasdaq in this case was a better trade because the movement on the price is more prominent. We are looking for the strength leader, we are looking for that index that wants to break faster, stronger and that wants to really show a more sharper technical picture. And in this case, that would be the Nasdaq. Now guys, remember, the relative strength analysis or the SMT technique is not enough on its own to really make you understand everything that you should know before starting to trade. So always remember to refer to ICT original content.